Um, how did you feel about the way they handled Hawkeye in this movie? Well, see, I don't know what movies he's been in. I've only seen the first Avengers, and in the first That's Avengers... That's the only one. Oh, well, yeah. he's a non-character in the first <laughs> Avengers, because he's brainwashed, and then he shows up, and by that point, all he can do is shoot people. Which, the first Avengers movie does a good job of actually character building through that, because of the, uh, because you see him as sort of a, a, a betrayer type figure, even even though you know he's brainwashed, you, you treat, your mind interprets him as kind of a, a traitor in the the beginning, and then he turns, and he's he's back with you guys, and he's fighting really valiantly with everyone else, and they're, they're back to back and trusting him, which has a very powerful effect on the viewer. It can really show you the actual trust people have for him, and how far he'll go for these people and everything. It has a lot of effect. So it does some pretty good character portrayal with what little it has of him. They, they greatly expanded Hawkeye's character in this movie. And that is a good thing and a bad thing. Like on the one hand, I understand they did it on one level because people felt that Hawkeye was useless in the first movie. He's He doesn't really do anything. Like even when he's brainwashed, he barely does anything in the first movie. And he doesn't have superpowers. He has a bow and arrow. So in this movie, they did several things. Uh, they tried to humanize him more. And they almost... Well, actually, no, they did. They sort of made him a comic relief character. And that's fine. That's good. Except for one more thing they did. They also teased the ever-loving fuck out of him dying in this movie. Uh, how do you mean? Oh my god, it's so... It's so, like, obvious. Like, every single scene with him, I was like, they're setting up for him to die. Where, uh, at the beginning, where it's like, oh, you don't have a girlfriend? And then he's on the phone, and he's like, oh, that was my, uh, uh, girlfriend. And then, you know, he re you realize he has a family, and it's like, oh, remember, you have to finish, you have to finish building that extra room. And then, even in the final battle, when he's in the car with uh, Black Widow, he's like, oh, and you know what I could really do to add on to the house? I didn't pick up on that while I was watching the movie, but now you mention it, they probably actually intended that to make Quicksilver's sacrifice at the end a lot more of a big deal. Joss Whedon has, has admitted this, that he did it to intentionally tease audiences with his death and then not do it. And to me, he went overboard. Like, he could have done it a bit more subtly. Yeah, and I think, uh, I do think a part of it might have been to make the Quicksilver sacrifice at the end more surprising, because if you're expecting Hawkeye to die the entire time, and then the scene where he it looks like he's going to die finally, Quicksilver rushes in, that would be impactful, but it was not in the final movie. That also has to do with cuts, because they, yes. cut, they cut a lot of Quicksilver content, and apparently, originally, uh, him and Hawkeye had more of an, an antagonistic relationship. Like, there's a little bit of that in the movie, where he's like, oh, too fast for you? But they say that, like, twice. Uh, apparently there's a bit more of that back and forth in the original version, and they sort of hated each other more. You and... can still tell they hate each other, because uh, when Hawkeye runs in in the scene where they're trying to wake up Vision, he and Quicksilver immediately go at it with each other. It's just not emphasized enough. and that And that's where it's like, okay, if this movie had just been streamlined a bit more and focused a bit more on the characters and not so much on the action, that could have been really effective. I, I feel like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously, I'm not a screenwriter, but I feel like I could come up with like a better structure for this movie than what they have. Well, after watching it, yes, you just go, okay, don't do most of what you did. Just like simplifying it, like, like the opening battle sequence is fine, just trim it down a bit. Then have the party, uh, Ultron escapes, cut out all the all the Wakanda stuff. Any important content from the Wakanda stuff could be transplanted into, is it like Seoul or Seoul? I don't know how to pronounce it. It's S-E-O-U-L. Is that the city where it takes Seoul. place? Seoul, yeah, I, I um, guess. Seoul's the capital of South Korea. I, I think that's where it was. Transplant I just saw Asians and I was like, okay, they're doing something in Asia. Not sure why they wanted to go to Asia, but they're in Asia now. Because of the lady doctor. Not sure why the writers wanted to put someone in Asia. Um, because uh, the first movie was very America-centric and they wanted this movie to be more national or international. So they could transplant any important Wakanda stuff into that scene and then have them go to the farm, figure shit out, do their character stuff there, and then final 
battle scene, right? Wouldn't that be simpler and more effective yeah. and have more room for character stuff? I think if you're making this shorter version that we got, um, that all would have made more sense and you could have ended up with an actually short version instead of a half assed short version. I think for the full version Whedon was going for, his structure might have actually made more sense because we don't know what they were doing and stuff like Wakanda. Like maybe something made Wakanda actually make sense. Like maybe there was an actual reason to have that vibranium and the uh, inside the the city at the end because at the end then he's just like oh we wonder what I was doing with the rest of the vibranium and then it doesn't really mention what the fuck it has to do with vibranium. The vibranium was their excuse for why Iron Man and Thor couldn't just blow it up to begin with. Ah, uh, yeah, they couldn't just smash it. Well, it's not like there aren't other huge things they don't just smash. Yeah, but they can't. I mean, you can't smash vibranium. Like remember, uh. Captain America's shield is made of that. And yeah, first, I know, but... And it, in the first movie, Thor's hammer does nothing to it. Yeah, maybe they actually meant to do something with that vibranium and that thing that actually made sense that would make Wakanda make more sense. I don't know. It, it makes sense why he needs vibranium. Because, because of his machine in the city and because of vision's body like it vision's body is supposed to be like this ultimate life form type thing so it makes sense for him to use vibranium my thing is that they could just as easily say oh like in some scene where the avengers are tracking down what ultron is doing they could be like oh he broke into this facility and got vibranium that that's all they had to say they didn't have to have this 20 minute sequence for it and speaking of the avengers just sitting around tracking what ultron is doing what the fuck happened with those nuclear codes? Uh, yeah. Um, I, I thought for the most, I thought for the majority of the movie, they just mentioned that as something that Ultron might do as like a motivating factor for why they really need to stop him. And then like an hour later in the movie, they mentioned nuclear codes and I'm like, wait, where did this come from? After the party scene where Ultron attacks them and then escapes, they make the assumption that he would just immediately go after nuclear codes, which... Sort of makes sense, okay. But then the movie never once shows Ultron actually going after nuclear codes. But even though they never show him doing that, later on at the farm, when Nick Fury shows up out of nowhere, they're talking like, well, what's the one thing Ultron needs? Well, he needs the nuclear codes. And it's like, how do you know this? He's never once gone after them. Yeah, that was probably an actual subplot in the original script that... Probably. A lot A lot of that was just weird. It's just weird. It's a weird, patchy movie that feels really stitched together. There's so much that's like, they cut content and it's, they tried to put it back together. It's just, it's, it's weird. It's a shambling mess. I still think it's fun. I think what you, uh, you gotta do is you guys gotta just go, okay, there's some good actors in here. They're superheroes. I get to watch superheroes beat people up. Even then, because of because it doesn't it doesn't come close to what I consider like that kind of movie. Yeah, it it does a terrible job at a lot of things, but what what they did well is still like best in class. Like these are still some of the best performances you're gonna get. There's just there's just too much bloat. The action isn't satisfying to watch, for me anyway. And to me, it was just a chore to sit through in- instead of like a fun, breezy movie, which is what I wanted, what I was expecting out of a superhero movie that people are like praising because it's fun and they're superheroes and they're brightly colored and they save people. And it's, you know, it's like the comics, but it's a chore to watch. It's not fun to watch. You just have to like, uh I completely agree with all of that. This this movie is full of problems, but um. Even then, I think it could have been redeemed a lot if it still had done a better job at being important as an in-universe event, and if it had done a better job handling plot threads. I think that's the biggest problem with it, really, is that it it ends up not being relevant in-universe, and you can feel that watching the movie. I think even if you enjoy the fun of it, after leaving the theater, you get over it pretty quickly. To me, this is this is where I sort of have to draw a line in like the quality of these movies or or the intent of these movies where a lot of them they have their universe stuff and they're trying to build their universe and that's that's fine i'm okay with that but each individual movie has felt like its own individual thing and it wanted to be a fun movie whereas this one 
doesn't feel like it's as interested in just being a fun movie. It's more interested in the universe stuff. And it doesn't do a good job of it. Even if it even if it was stumbling over itself handling all that stuff, if it actually handled tying all these things together, it could still be really enjoyable just from the sheer the sheer scope of that much in universe stuff going on. Like you would still it would still feel impressive and, and fun from watching all this stuff happen. Like even when you're watching a TV show and there's a bad episode but it develops a plot in a really cool way, that's still enjoyable. You still get excited over that plot development, even if you're groaning about how poorly done the episode was. You're still excited over that plot development. It, this movie just didn't do a good job at developing any plots. Even Black Widow and Hulk, which is the only thing it did a good... It, it, it had That plot had the most uh, meat to it. It threw it away at the end. It was just like, okay, well, Hulk ran away. So nothing really happened there. That I'm fine with. Except for that one bedroom scene, I'm fine with everything they did with Bruce Banner and uh Romanoff, is that her name? Yeah, yeah. I am fine with I'm fine with them like making him run away at the end because that can lead to the cool developing stuff in the future. But it when that's the only development in the movie that really had much meat to it, the fact that it gets thrown away it kind of drills in that this movie was basically irrelevant in universe wise. Like basically the only important thing that happened was uh, a, like three new characters entered the universe and the mind gem was found. It's important universe wise in terms of like setting up character relationships. Like they kind of have to put Iron Man and Captain America at odds because civil war is happening. They have to give Thor these visions because Thor Ragnarok is happening. Um, they have to get Hulk by himself because I, I'm pretty sure there's going to be an independent Hulk movie coming up. See, the thing about the, that that stuff all is, is that it doesn't feel like a relevant development. That all feels like a tenuous link. Like, okay, I said something that involved this topic in a previous movie. So now this movie is about this topic instead of this major event happened in this movie or this, this thing happened in, internally with this character. And so that would inevitably lead to this sort of thing. And it, it, it develops in a really interesting way, which this doesn't do. The, these aren't developments. These are just name service to the plots of future movies. I, I think we can just sum it up. This movie is not interested in itself. That, that kind of sums up everything about this movie. It's not interested in itself, and it's not interested in the links between the other movies either. Like, if Thor had been walking around the whole time worrying about the end of the world, that could that could have added a lot of a lot of uh, tone and stuff to the entire franchise. And I think we should be clear, like when we say that it's not interested in itself, we mean the final finished version that we saw in theaters. I think if we saw an extended version, with it our, would probably it would probably change our lives. It would, would probably hold up so much better. From what I've read, all the cuts are just like cut in the worst possible way. The original version might not have been fun at all. I mean, that's like probably like, what, a three and a half hour movie? Probably would have been really slow, but at least it probably would have done a much better job at handling all this development stuff, and you could still be interested in that. It might have felt more like a, not a popcorn movie, but like just a movie movie that I would I would watch like seriously if it was handled like that. Because I think a lot of these Marvel movies are just fun popcorn movies, but The Winter Soldier straddles that line where it's not just a popcorn movie. That's like comparing sci-fi movies to Empire Strikes Back, though, so... Yeah. How much How much are we going to be shit on for shitting on Avengers 